You are not gonna believe this. Joe Rogan has only turned into the one thing that he hates the most, an animal rights activist. A very selective one, admittedly. Ignore the arrows on his shirt. Arrows like the ones he proudly uses to kill innocent animals in cold blood. You and I would have met eight years ago, just about to the date, in a few months, because it will be the eight year anniversary of my being sued by Marine Land of Canada for plotting to steal a walrus. Meet Phil Demis. The walrus in question had imprinted on him during the time that he was a trainer there and he was concerned for the walrus's well-being. I've always had a soft spot in my heart for dolphins and orcas and, and I just, I think we're going to look at it. I've said this before on the podcast with you, but I think we're going to look at it in the future the same way we look at slavery. Vegans feel similarly, except we don't draw arbitrary lines over which animals we think deserve their freedom, like a goddamn barbarian. I think they're, it makes me sad just talking about it. Oh, you poor thing. Go eat another piece of animal <laughs> Murdered flesh always cheers you up, Jay. I think they're as intelligent as we are. I think they're just different. What the f should intelligence have to do over which animals you deem it okay to exploit and murder and which you don't? Would you use brain damaged people as slaves? No. And because we don't understand their language, we, uh, we think it's okay. You don't need to understand their language to know that they suffer. Have you not heard the blood curdling screams of pigs in a gas chamber? I know that you've heard animals scream out in agony as you've shot them in the chest with your bow. Why do they have to learn how to ask you to please stop before you cease terrorizing them? And I think it's, it's beyond fucked up. Watching your documentary made me cry, man. Anyone else think that was put on? It made me really cry when I was watching that dolphin get force fed. Then why the f did you stick up for the force feeding of ducks and geese to make foie gras in a previous episode? Do you only value animals based on what they can do for you? Ah, oh, these ones look nice, so we'll leave those alone. I love eating fatty ducks liver though, so we'll make these animals' lives a living f***ing hell. God damn, that's hard. When they're holding his mouth open and shoving fish in his throat, I'm like, fucking Christ, what, what is that? Imagine a person. Imagine a person. Yeah, imagine a person the next time you put an arrow into an animal's chest. Their scream, the fear, the blood, the gasping for air, the physical anguish, the grief of their loved ones. I mean, you're dealing with an animal that has a cerebral cortex that's 40% larger than a person's. And what? They all feel fear. They all seek love. They all run from violence. They all scream under the knife, just like us. <sighs> Whew, I'm getting emotional already. If only you had a fraction of that compassion for dear elk and moose. Hey, Joe. Uh, Senator Murray Sinclair, who's, who's actually retiring, but he now has introduced what's called the Jane Goodall Act, which is now going to extend animal protections and ban the captivity of great apes. Uh, oh, listen to Joe, all excited. Imagine how deflated it'd be if Phil suddenly added, and hunting. Joe, I will say this. That's crazy. I will say this. You have the most influential podcast in the world. Yep. The most downloaded podcast in the world. Joe's all pleased with himself because in this one instance, he's actually doing something nice for animals by having Phil on. But why has he deleted James Wilkes' utter demolishing of Chris Crasser? Joe said that James knocked it out of the park in defense of the Game Changers movie and veganism. If Joe really did care about animals and despises factory farming like he claims, he would have left that up. I can't help but feel he's full of There's no good side to keeping those animals in captivity. There's no good side to be running a place like Marine Land. Joe, you seem to struggle with perspectives. There is one good side from the owner's perspective, money. No good side for the victims, but plenty for the oppressor. Just like the animals you kill. No good side for them. But you enjoy murdering them and eating their dead bodies. So in your book, well, that's just fine, isn't it, Joe? The video alone of the, the damage to their skin when they're using chlorine and seeing those animals bleeding and seeing those animals getting force-fed, there's no defending it. Are you saying that it's wrong to hurt and exploit animals, Joe? Only you're sending very mixed signals. You can't defend that. It's not. And we have this concept of intelligence based on our own ability to manipulate the environment around us. You speak for yourself, son. That's something I've personally never subscribed to or even thought. 
our concept of intelligence is based on our ability to build things and drive a car and fly a plane. And that's how we, we, we need to see manipulation in order to, 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 to believe that it's intelligent life. No, that's just you. But then again, I've never had to make up bonkers rationalizations to defend my cruel dietary choices. Now Phil talks about how he became mum to a walrus. I'm leaving in this part to uncover Phil's massive hypocrisy later in the video. I sought to pull her away from that situation. All I did was put my hands in front of her face and she opened her nostrils big. And I knew in that moment something had happened because now she was following me everywhere. And I couldn't have attributed that to anything that I'd ever done in all of my experience. So just the act of getting close to her and putting your hands on her face. I believe it was during that traumatic, whatever happened, her brain circuitry opened. And she realized that you're the one who takes care of her. I became her mom. And so days go by and, you know, I'm going back there and she's barking for me and I open the gate, she's following me. And, you know, she wasn't healthy when we got her. So now I was spending my eight hour to 12 hour shifts actually just sleeping. And Smooshy's laying on top. You see the footage in the yeah. documentary. She's just laying beside me. She would only eat from me. It became this crazy thing. And that's what became. I mean, and that's when, that's when, the, that's when the world started to change for me. I, I don't have children, Joe. I, don't, I never did that. He seems like a lovely guy, right? He is very obviously capable of compassion for animals. You know, there's an element of what I do that is considered animal rights. And the animal rights people, if you will, will celebrate the work and also, and also very often... Um, criticize it because I'm a meat eater. No way, really? How funny. You mean to say that they celebrate you when you're kind to animals, but criticize you when you demand their death? How very strange. I am in every which way trying to distance myself from being a noted animal rights activist. Do you not enjoy feeling like a massive hypocrite? Whereas I used to be identified as an animal rights guy, these days I am more inclined of just being known as a guy who's done this thing, right? So I'm trying to sort of get away yeah, from that. The I don't term mean, animal rights is, it's a heavy term, you know, and unfortunately it's, um, it's, it carries with it a lot of other activity and behavior. Nothing has any meaning except that which we attach to it. When I hear animal rights activist, I think of a heroic person risking attack and ridicule from dumb simply because they're kindly trying to reduce animal suffering. You only have negative connotations because you're shit to animals. It That's, just ends there for me. Well, when you were on the documentary Grilling Steaks in your backyard, that became painfully obvious. Look at Joe smirking. He thinks that it's really funny that an animal suffered in this instance. What a hypocrite. There was a bunch of protesters outside of Antler and uh, Michael decided it'd be a fun thing to butcher a deer in front of the window. How hilarious, Joe. Those were my people until they, uh, well, until you and I took that selfie in front of Antler and- Would it be equally as hilarious if people took the animals that you cared about and brutally hacked them to pieces in front of you? Imagine them laughing as you are now. You'd think that they were mentally retarded. How the f are both of you so poor in terms of emotional intelligence? It's gobsmacking. They don't, ki they kill not nearly as many animals as all the places that the vegans are now taking. I call them selfie burgers. They're all in front of A&W. Hey, look at this burger. Look at this. It's like Kentucky Fried Chicken. Look, they got a vegan burger now. Go to, it's like, whoa, dude, do you have any idea what the f You don't get to criticize those who seek not to cause suffering while you've got blood on your hands. It just blows my mind, the hypocrisy. Yeah, f***ing tell me about it. They want uh, people to eventually move away from eating meat. Eventually? Try immediately, like how you want orcas out for attractions now, instead of in 50 years time. It's like, I, I can understand not wanting factory farming. When you want an animal to not die from hunting, that is arguably the best death it could ever have. Humans are just another type of animal. Would it be the best death that you could have if someone shot you before your time? Would you be okay with that? Now, if factory farming ends, it does mean animals suffer less. And we're all on the same page there. Does this mean that you'll be re-uploading Wilkes versus Cresser then? No, just virtue signaling again, is it? Ah, oh, okay. I think humane treatment of animals is it's imperative. How do you humanely kill somebody who does not want to die? Answer that little conundrum. Whether it's animals that we consume or animals that we treat as pets or whatever it is, humane treatment of animals is, 
it shows how what who we are as culture mostly a pack of savages currently but the tide is turning well done to this year's half a million veganuary signups next joe and phil got onto the subject of big game hunting and you have biases right? if you have this idea that you want to maintain hunting for for example lions you will frame your argument in a way that ignores the cruelty of what you're doing the fact you don't eat the lions and you, you'll put it in this thing and the grossness of someone standing there holding a lion's head like man lions are the fucking apex predators it's supposed to be eating you bitch are black bears not the apex predator in canada joe have you forgotten that you went to canada and shot that bear don't worry i'm here to remind you think of me as the hypocrisy police you would never hold on to that lion if it wasn't for that rifle my god good point phil Next time you want to mess with a large bear, why don't you go mano e bero with him in the octagon, as Phil here is advocating for. That's all the hypocrisy I can stand in one day. Now click this. We're coming